So I don't know out there who makes videos of skidoos and who doesn't. I don't really watch a lot of repair videos on YouTube, even though I make hundreds of them. So I thought I would make a video about us building the bottom end of this engine and the stuff that we did to put it back together. Uh, we put on about 100 miles on the sled since we did it. So it's running super great. No issues. And I did quite a few videos on my XP back here and also do some on my Rev as well. So you may want to check out our playlist. And if my video helps you, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, share my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up for free on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I answer for everyone that I possibly can. And if at nighttime you want to turn the volume down on your computer so you don't have to listen to my mouth run and help our channel out by putting on one of the sweet Clayway playlists and letting them suckers play from front to back, we'll love you forever down here. Remember, no matter what it is in life, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. I almost forgot to mention I have an excellent video about this clutch and why my clutch fell off and what you're about to see happen is pretty astronomical. I got this done pretty cheap though. I think I ended up spending like six or seven hundred bucks, which wasn't bad. Okay, so me and Tim <laughs> have got the XP inside the garage and we're starting to tear it down. We've taken off some of the plastic out of here and we started taking off some screws. We're going to remove the cowl, remove the exhaust. We're going to now take a look at this clutch. Now this guy tells me that he can fix that, which from what I understand and what I read online, it can actually be fixed. So that's pretty neat. In my situation, I'm going to get a whole new lower case because of the bearings and so forth and so on. But you can look this up and you can get this PTO end off the internet. Hopefully, we'll be wrapping her up pretty soon. So another thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do something with this secondary right here. Can't have that tearing into the belt. That'll cause serious problems. But as we tear this thing apart, we're going to show you the different problems that we run into and found like an oil leak up there but this thing's gonna be pretty much like new when we get it done so we'll see what sure. happens so fast forward to what we actually came here for we've got the crank rebuilt we've got the case checked out we've got everything done we're gonna go ahead and start reassembling this engine so you guys can see how we did it not by the book but we go through some mechanical steps and definitely show you how to assemble everything magneto such and such we don't do a top end because there's I know there's dozens of videos of that. See what happens. So we're going to reassemble the engine on this 800R Skidoo. And we're just cleaning out all the stuff. We want to make sure that we get a pick, get all of our old material off, make sure that we have no high spots. We take our finger and rub it over the top of here, get this cleaned up a little bit better. We want to make sure that this area is as smooth as can be. I can even do a little bit more dressing over here getting all of this old material off. Now in my situation, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use Honda's uh, assembly. We'll see if it works. Obviously you can ask me in the comments what happens. And we were talking about the ISO grease that goes up inside the end of the bearings here. And Tim just pointed out to me, and this is Timmy. Hi. You guys who don't know him, no touch Timmy. We're down in his garage, he's got some pretty sweet stuff in here he does a lot of vintage racing and stuff like that at Bevra so what we're going to do is we noticed that looking down here that there's a bolt and this would be how you would iso grease this side is our assumption now we're not masters at skidoo 800s or nothing like that we had a lot of talking and discussion of where we should put grease and how we should do it and we're just going off of our mechanical knowledge. We don't have any books or anything on this, but we're gonna end up greasing our seals here that fit down there inside these grooves. And this is obviously gonna have the ISO grease in it here. And we're gonna ISO grease, I believe it's uh, the PTO side, or the, this side right here, which is going to be our stator side. We'll grease that bearing before we put it in with ISO grease, and then we'll grease this one before we put our seal on. But we're gonna show you a couple things about assembling it. Tim's got some pretty good ideas, and we're just about getting ready once we 
grease up the seals to drop the crank down in this and once we clean all of this up and make it look real nice and then put our glue down on there and put her together so now we're going to put the isoflex in there and tim's going to do that because he knows how to work the syringe now you may be thinking to yourself maybe there's a cheaper lube that you can use well i don't recommend that i did lots of research on this lube and this stuff is impervious to outside moisture dirt debris everything this stuff is really really good and worth the money to use on just about anything. so we're going to set the crank in this side we're going to glue that side and we're going to put this put this on the top of this right flip it over put it on there yep so all tim did was sit here and move the bearing back and forth allowing the grease to work down inside the bearing obviously you could tell before he did that it had some old grease inside there so we're just repacking it so it has a little bit more and just in case you guys are curious on these cranks these bearings feel a little bit stiff and from the research that i did they're supposed to be so once we get that half of the head point or the cylinder block cleaned we're going to go ahead and blow it out with some air So now when you get this fairly clean, these are some of the reasons that you want to make sure you blow this thing out, clean it up with some brake cleaner, carb cleaner, whatever. Get it all cleaned up and nice. I'm not going to mess with my bearing surfaces too much. I don't really have a problem right here. It's just that it looks like grease that's right there. I, I don't know, but anyways. So the reason that you see all this grimy buildup right here is because that iso grease works its way through there and underneath there and that ends up discoloring it this side gets oiled by your fuel oil mixture and the same thing with these bearings right here and then this separates the coolant from being in the center of the engine because this is your water pump and your oil pump drive and just in case that ever leaked coolant down there or oil inside there. This side is your water pump drive. This side is your oil pump drive. The two red seals in the center of the crank are so oil doesn't get inside your oil pump, water pump drive. Tim is lubing up the seals so they don't dry out on the inside of the engine. He does a very, very good job of lubing up seals. He's obviously had lots of practice at it. Lubes up the shaft. He lubes it generously with the generous compound known as lube. Now he takes the crank. He sits the crank in there, making sure that all the pins line up. Anytime you're reassembling an engine, you want to gently reassemble the components. Do not force or push things down into place with unnecessary brute strength. As you notice, he pushes down the seal. It goes in there very easily. He wiggles things around to make sure it's dropped into the housing correctly. Nothing should be forced. I cannot stress that enough. Double check everything. Make sure everything is seated down properly and in its place before you reassemble the other component. We had two tubes of Honda Bond. One tube was kind of rubbery and didn't have a very good consistency to it so we ended up opening up a new one so check for that if you're using honda bond that's what they give you for it yeah So he's going to spread the grease into them holes there and when he puts it down he's going to put down a nice consistent layer thin layer yeah thin layer what we don't want to have happen is we don't want that to break because if it's allowed to suck any outside air into the case that did mix with the fuel properly it changes the fuel pressure the fuel ratio and then can heat up bearings and cause things to go so he's going to lay that down thin with his fingers 
and then we'll put the two halves together and the case will be put together. We're also going to tighten down all the bolts to according to the documentation that I have, which I'll put up here in the top of the screen, 21 foot pounds. If you use these numbers, pay particular attention if it says inch pounds or foot pounds on the bolts that you're installing. Not a super generous layer. We've got the seal installed down here on the end. And we're also gonna insert our stator through the hole there because we can't push this through. Now, when we're assembling both halves, we wanna do it very gently. We don't wanna disturb the adhesive that we've applied. So be very cautious when you do this. Now you could take a rubber mallet and tap it down if you wanted. You want to make sure that all your pins from your crank are lined up on your pin journals when you put the case together. Now just like assembling any other kind of component, we want to insert all the bolts before we start to torque anything down. Well, look at the free plugs we're giving your aunt with the Trail of Terror. <laughs> <laughs> Come down to the Trail of Terror and be terrorized. Only open on the weekends near Halloween. <laughs> she didn't even sponsor this video. We just loosely put the bolts down. We're not trying to cram anything together right now. We're just getting them where we're about ready to torque them. Pay particular attention to the torque rating on these bolts because the smaller ones have a different torque than the other ones. Okay, so on these case bolts, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and work our way out doing the same thing. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like these two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, when you've got that torqued down properly, everything should move real free and be real nice. You shouldn't have any binding through the movement whatsoever. Now, Tim had an idea. We're not so certain that this is the way you're supposed to do it because we don't have a book. But because we're not dummies, we're kind of thinking about putting ISO grease inside here. The only scenario with that is, is you don't, if you pack it inside there with the syringe, you might get it inside the threads here and then the Loctite wouldn't hold that together. You know what I mean? And these have to be red Loctited. They will vibrate out. Another thing, when you're going to put this on, from the research that I've done, the white one goes down towards the bottom. So this is black and yellow. So this one goes up here and the white one mounts to the bottom. Now we're also gonna put a bunch, a bunch of silicone. You can see all that silicone that's back there, that was back there at one time, it was all over these plugs. We're going to silicone these down behind here when we go to put these pickups on. I don't know why, but that's what one guy said. Skadoo guy. So that's what we'll do. When you go to install your stator, make sure the backside mounting surfaces between the block and the stator are free of debris. So we have five bolts that bolt the stator down. One bolt does not go here. So that's at the about approximate nine o'clock position. We must put Loctite, red Loctite on these bolts. They will wiggle out and you must install all five of them because what will happen is these bolts pass through the crankcase and it will suck air into the crankcase and detonate that cylinder. Make sure you put a very generous amount of red Loctite on your five bolts that are securing down your stator. On the outside portion of your crankcase, you're going to have five bolts that are longer and they go on the outside edge. Make sure you lock tight these bolts down as well. Now, when you go to 
put these in here, you want to make sure that you tighten all, you put them in loose enough to start every one of them before you torque them down properly. So on your cover here, you're going to notice this Permatex down inside here. Now you can place a generous amount, but what that actually does is it holds your pickup coils from vibrating. Even though we're going to lock tight these screws into here and we're going to hold them down really well, we want to make sure that they don't vibrate loose. So that's why that's there. You can take it off and replace it or do whatever you want. Make sure your magneto is clean and make sure you have your keyway on your shaft. I said on your shaft. I'm gonna look down inside the keyway and when you look down inside there with some light, it's not lined up. He's gotta go a little bit to the right. So he's gonna do that and then we'll see if we can get it on there. Yeah. Like that. <clears throat> There, popped right on. Yeah, and then it pops right on when the keyway's in there properly and throw that wet straight out of there. Now we can tighten it down. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that our mating surfaces for our water pump are correct, and we're gonna mount that down. On our oil pump, it just has a simply an O-ring that goes inside there, and then inside your gasket kit, you're gonna find a little gasket like this if you didn't remove your water pump which we did not then you don't need to replace this gasket it goes behind the impala shaft seal side there so we're not going to worry about that then we're going to take this we're going to install our flywheel we have our flywheel and we can tell how this goes by just putting that down now with the recoil adapter installed onto the engine we can put in the iso grease on the other bearing assembly once we put the iso grease on the other bearing assembly we will also put the iso grease around this spring right here and then press this in and you can just use a big socket or something to push that on there and drive in the seal you want to make sure that you drive in this seal squarely and that it's not sitting in there. You want to make sure that you use dielectric grease on the inside and the outside of the seal. So make sure you use something big enough to put it on properly. The grease on the back side of the spring helps the spring stay on. And hopefully you can just push the seal in there like we did, then put your cover on the top and bolt it down properly. And then our assembly, other than putting our plastic cover on there for a recoil, is done. I didn't, and I'm not gonna show you the top end putting it together because there's dozens of videos showing you that stuff. Hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully we're correct. Reach out to me in the comments. Find out if this thing blew up again. Timmy's Wall of Fame. <laughs> so right now we can't remember the clocking, but look at how sweet that looks. That is going to be neat. Uh, and I'm really, really super excited because these things break so much. I'm hoping this one lasts the rest of its life. And even when I sell this sled, because this is a universal fit, this will fit a lot, a lot of skidoos and a lot of different makes and models. And I'm sure they actually make these for Arty Cats and Polaris and anything you can think of. So check them out, give them a call, tell them Clay sent you. I don't get anything for it, but it's nice to know that something you're doing is actually working. So we've been out on the trail and this thing is freaking smoking hot. Hopefully this video helped you folks. Brat Babs and BJ's baby, all the way with the Clayway.
If that video was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me that sweet old thumbs up if you've got a question for me. You can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I can't help you with that old baby mama drama, but I may be able to help you fix that whip. Remember, no matter what it is in life, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. God bless, folks. Have the absolute best of days. Brat, brat, baby.